it's trash day again. Thought I might take a look around and see what's up. See if there's anything at all worth picking, maybe. You never know. I think I spotted something right up here a second ago. Is this the right? If this is the right street. Yeah, it's right there. It's like a broken CD player. I'll grab it. Hell. It's got bookshelf speakers that detach, so I don't know. But it's been raining, so I don't know if it's been rained on. I'll just throw it away at my house. <laughs> okay, so here is this little boom box that I found on uh, the curb in the trash on trash day. This is a JVC, and it has uh, these little breakout speakers. What is this? It's, uh, I don't see a model number on Oh, yeah, I do. PCX560. Portable component CD system. Okay, so uh, I have found through messing around with it, I thought at first uh, when I got this that this tape probably indicated that this was broken, the latch, and that this was taped on, but I don't think that is the case. I'm not sure why the tape is here yet. Maybe it's cracked up here? I don't know. Actually, curious about this first of all. Let's pull this tape off and see why this is on here. Uh, no apparent reason <laughs> whatsoever. Maybe it was taping on a uh, sign or something. But yeah, that's probably what it was. Maybe there was a piece of paper or something that said free and they maybe they had it at the curb at some point who knows but that this was actually in the top of a uh it was in the top of a bin and it was kind of po poking out which is why i got it i did notice that this speaker is loose on this side so that needs to be tightened up or addressed in some way i'm not sure what's up with that um it's plugged in right now it did not come with a cord but i have a compatible cord it does come on see the power light on there I put a CD in it and it reads the CD. Uh, it will actually start playing a CD as well. Usually it will. But sometimes it also will try to read and it'll click. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Let me get the mic closer. Okay, you can hear there it's kind of searching and it keeps searching. If I um, press the next track, sometimes it'll just go ahead and play. It's not going to in this case for some reason. Let me try maybe reloading the thing. You can hear it just kind of having trouble at, at, at points. Well, now it's going to make a liar out of me, and it's not going to want to play at all. I'm really unsure why it's doing that. Let me see if I can jostle the lens. Force it to kind of start at a different position. Maybe it'll... Uh, jar itself loose. Yeah, now it's not wanting to do anything at all. Yeah, totally making a liar out of me. It, it actually has worked most of the time.
anyway, uh, so let me let me uh, just tell you what it was doing. So it was playing for the most part. Oh, it finally read right there. Let's see if it'll play now. All right, there it goes. And the thing does sound good. The I can change the preset EQ. You know, it's got the beat and the pop and clear setting, flat EQ. Also has a hyper bass button here you can press, which does which does increase the bass quite a lot. Uh, there is a, another bass switch on the back. Um, and, and this will continue to play usually up until a certain point. And then for whatever reason, sometimes it'll just start, it'll stop the track and start searching again on the lens. So I'm thinking there's, um, there's something obstructing the lens perhaps. I think when I picked it up and jostled it around, there was uh, a coin or something that was rattling around there. So, and I did find something in the bottom of the thing too. When I opened the cassette, there was a, uh, like a pog or something. Now I fished it out already, but it was down in the bottom and there's no telling what's been dropped down in there or what's, what's inside of it. So we're going to check that out. Also the tape does work. I'll put, put a tape on here. This is a, uh, this is a relatively new tape cassette from my friend, John Bellows, who I went to high school with. He's a singer songwriter, uh, artist definitely check him out he's over on Bandcamp, but uh I'll try one of his tapes here to show you that the tape does work Fast forward and rewind work just fine for the tape mechanism. Sounds great. Um, so that's good. Also, the tuner works. Although the antenna the antenna is broken off and I've actually added a little clip on gator clip there to extend the antenna but it does work um, and it has a seek function so it's one of those deals where because there wasn't that much of an adjustment it did feel like that the market was, was largely getting this Some of these radio stations are so bass heavy. See, like you can actually hear that, that's clear. The last one was so bass heavy you couldn't even make out what it was. And it's the same station. Anyway, so uh, everything works ex with the exception of the CD player, and we have that problem right there. So let's uh, first address the CD player issue, see if we can get that work. And I'm just kind of curious if we can get this thing fully functional. If we can, this will probably end up being a, uh, a little outside boombox unit for my garage when I'm doing outside work, which would be nice to have. I can listen to some tunes while I work outside. So let's kill the power and uh, let's see what we need to do here. The speakers were not hooked up when I found it. These are, you, they're releasable so you can press this little thing here and take the speaker off and set it, you know, set it out for a wider stereo um, spread. 
but we're going to have to take these off to get uh, this open. Actually, I might as well take the speakers off. Usually, let's see, usually they slide up. So, well, maybe it slides down. Yeah, you hear that? It sounded like maybe there was a, uh, I don't know, something in there. There's some missing screws. So that's unfortunate. It looks like maybe two of the four screws for the speaker are off. Uh, it looks like the slide's backwards. Okay. That's it. The slide's backwards. Sounds like there's something down inside of that one, too. Yeah, I can definitely hear it. There's something inside of here rattling around. There we go. Yeah, see, there's some, something inside of this, too. How the hell did it even get in there? Oh, I know how. It came from the... It came through the base port on the front. All right, what well, we got? Screws way the hell down in there. My God, I'm gonna need a long screwdriver to get to those. Oh, there's the uh, cord. <laughs> there's the cord. So it did come with the cord, that's cool. Um, yeah, let's get this apart. I'm thinking there's something, uh, there's maybe a cracked, um, cracked PC board, something like that, maybe? That's the way it's acting. Yeah, it's just acting like there's a cracked PC board or something, because at, at certain points, when this thing was working pretty reliably, for the most part, I could kind of put my hand on here and sort of press down a little bit on it. Not, not really jostle the thing or move it, but I could just kind of press down on this area, it seemed like, and it would immediately quit. So I'm thinking there's a board flex issue going on maybe a cracked board yeah this screwdriver is not going to work i'm gonna have to get something longer than that stand by okay so here is a problem this is probably the longest or well it's not the longest i'll have to search around i've got i know i have one or two screwdrivers that are longer but this one's still probably about an inch or so too short to reach the screw which is up here so well over an inch uh, let me look around a little further and see what I've got. I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to take this thing apart or not. Where there's a whip, there's a way. So, <laughs> this is pretty ridiculous, but, uh, oh, I don't know if that's going to work or not. Actually, I think it's too tight down in there now. Yep, it sure is. Oh, come on, don't do that. All right, um... What have I got to do here then? I got to. Yeah, this may not work at all after all. It's hard to, it's hard to tell whether whether I'm on the screw or whether I'm I, no, I'm not on the screw. I was bottoming out on the thing. This is, this is, oh no, come on, give me a break. It's, it's, so the diameter of the, It tapers, it tapers down to a point where you cannot get a screwdriver 
you can't get an extension in it. It tapers right down to the, basically the width of the screw itself. I can see where the extension is bottoming out. Okay. You see this, this collar right here is just is too wide. If it was this width all the way up, but what am I gonna get to hold that? I don't know. Okay, so despite trying several things uh, to get down to those screws, nothing is working. It's all bottoming out right here around the collar of whatever I use to try to get down there. There's, there's no extension I have in my position that can undo those screws. I, I just cannot do it. Um, even after taking this little sleeve off of this extender, um, it still was bottoming out right, right there around that shoulder but i did shake this thing around and i managed to get five cents out of it so already it was worth digging out of the garbage for the five cents right <laughs> but uh and, oh and even one of these is a pre-1982 penny which means that it's uh, actual copper and not this zinc crap that they replaced it with later on to try to fool everybody um but there were five cents in in this all in copper and they were in various levels of the thing and i kind of shaked it or shook it around uh and got them all out i don't know there might be even more but it looks like right now without the speakers on if i press it looks like if i'm pressing play now it's actually going to the play position Yeah, I just I just don't know. I, I don't know if that's gonna fix it or not. Uh, see, I see moving that around. It looked like it started over once again. Yep. See, it's still starting over. It seems to happen when I when I press when I press right in here. It's when it seems to happen. I, I don't know. I'll shake it around some more and see if I can get some more money out of it. Without a really long screwdriver, I mean a really long screwdriver, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this thing out of here. Okay, so it appears as if it appears as if removing the pennies from the electronics solved the problem. Can you imagine that? That getting copper round pennies out of a electronics uh, device would cause it to function correctly. Yeah. And it's it's very likely that that's what caused them to throw it away. It's like that you know if the CD player doesn't work and then half of the functionality of the thing but it appears to be uh, seeking and playing perfectly now uh, by the way this is uh, Beethoven's third piano concerto in C minor opus 37 which is one of the greatest pieces of music ever written Had a tape of this when I was in high school. Uh, well, in middle school, actually. Um, it was this little white cassette. I remember it so vividly. On one side was the third piano concerto, and on the other side was the uh, Fantasia for uh, chorus. Uh, for Yeah, for piano and chorus. Um, what, Opus 87? Whatever it was. Anyway, um, and those two pieces of music have, to this day, become my favorite piece of classical music of all time. You still, I used to actually listen to that tape more than, more than my Metallica tapes. <laughs> it was actually heavier, <laughs> you know. Anyway, so short video, but that's uh, gonna do it for this one. And actually, you know, another piece of equipment that you know just a simple investigation um, helped us solve what the problem was and save this from the dump so uh, if you've enjoyed this one hit subscribe and for now we'll see y'all later seems to be working fine